Hello friends, welcome back. We are doing another video about Adobe Photoshop. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to cut out hair using the select and mount and refine hair option. So let's go ahead and get started. For today, I've given you this image, um, though you can find really any image that involves maybe a more complex looking hair opportunity. For this, if you'll notice, there's lots of various strands. And what I'm about to show you is not a perfect solution by any means to cut up and remove hair easily from the background of an image, but it is a great way to help you navigate this option easier. I'm gonna just move over to my lasso tool. Um, it doesn't matter what tool I'm on, as long as it's a selection tool, because I want to be able to activate the select and mask option. I have not selected anything prior because we're going to do everything in the select and mask option for today. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my black and white view mode just so you can see what Photoshop does to help you. Once upon a time, we had all of these different options over here to help us refine our selection, including the refine edge brush here. However, the refine hair was brought just a couple of years ago and it's made a huge difference to how it refines the selection, being aware that there is hair in the image that we're using. First, I'm gonna start with my select subject button here at the top of our options bar. And what you'll see is the program is going to work in selecting our person here. And one of the things hopefully you will notice is the hair is pretty solid. The white is what is selected and the black is what is not selected. But next I'm going to click the refine hair command and I want to I want you to watch what happens and see how the selection adjusts itself. It really gets in there and it pays attention to the nuance of what's being selected. However, one of the things you should see is it thinks part of the face is part of the selection. So we do need to make some adjustments. While this is really helpful for helping us get a better selection, it's not perfect. So I am gonna go through and we're gonna switch to, um, it's set on object aware. If yours is set on color aware, you may wanna switch to object aware depending on the image. Sometimes you can switch to this one and your selection gets a little different. You can see it kinda did a little bit better of a job with color aware on the hair, but it did worse on the face. So I am gonna do some repairs to this. On the left-hand side, we have our various tools, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna to stick to the quick selection, the refine edge brush, and the brush tool. And you have your plus and your minus in order to add or subtract from your selection. You also can increase or decrease your brushes in this panel just like you would in any other panel. You can also change the hardness of that brush, which I like to keep mine at like 90, 92%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just kind of showing Photoshop that these are good things. I want these solid. I don't want them to be slightly um, opaque when it takes my selection away. So I'm gonna go through here and just kind of clean up this edge. With anything like this, you can't rely on the program to do all of the work for you, even though it gives you some really great starting points. You do have to go through and kind of adjust your selection. Think of this as just another way to do quick mass mode, if you will. I am going to have to change my brush ever so slightly as I'm going through just to kind of clean up some of these various edges. You also can try using the quick select version in order to let the program help decide what it should and shouldn't be doing. One of the things though that happens is it can change your selections in other places. So that's kind of a personal choice based around what it is you're trying to do. And I'm going to undo what I'm doing because I didn't like what it did. So I'm going to keep kind of going back and fixing some of my objects here. So it did get in here, so I'm gonna kinda of come in here and clean some of that up. And I'm always having to move between tools in order to get a better selection for my subject. There is no one-stop shop button for this type of thing. You do have to go through and do the work and clean up your image as you go. One of the things I also find that I need to do sometimes is go out of this black and white mode and move back into my overlay mode to help me see a little bit better. Sometimes I switch between the various modes to help me kind of see what it's going to look like a little bit more effectively and then I can 
make those adjustments a little bit more easily when I can see whether something is opaque or not opaque, if maybe the edge doesn't look as solid as it needs to. But this is not a quick fix. It doesn't go exactly the way it should right away. You do have to help the program along. Now, when I was originally learning, I had to do all of this by hand. So we are very lucky to have this feature, but we do need to do a little bit of cleanup on this. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going through. And again, we kind of use the different, the different modes depending on what it is we're trying to do. And you can see there was a little gray spot over there. So I'm gonna clean up some of that. And I also like to pull my feather down when I'm around kind of these soft edges as I need to. It's okay if yours isn't perfect. Remember, we're here to practice. We're here to learn a skill. And this is one of those where you're going to continue to grow as you use this. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up some of my edge detection down here. I'm going to maybe feather it just a little bit more. And you can see it's doing a much nicer job on my hair right here. And I may shift edge a little bit depending. And then I'm going to say okay. Now, if this isn't perfect, which it may not be, one of the things I like to do is go into my select menu and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna save my selection and I'm gonna call this hair. And the reason I wanna save it is as I go back, if I duplicate this into a new layer, which is what I wanna do, which is Command J on my keyboard, my selection goes away. And let's say I'm like, ooh, right there, I need to really adjust right here. I did not do a great job on the bottom of her hair and my selection is gone, I would have to start over. Instead, I can just get rid of this duplicated layer, go back to select, and I'm gonna load that selection back. And now I can continue to select and mask and make those adjustments as I need to do them. That I think is a really good gift that we have. Um, and it's something you should be taking advantage of as you're growing through this program. And it's okay to just save your selections as you go. You can replace those saves later if you need to. But having that as an option really helps you improve what it is you're working through. When you are done and you are happy with your selection, you are going to put your subject here in another layer. And then we're just going to add a solid color or a gradient fill or a pattern fill. That is a your choice behind our subject here, just so we can see whether we did a good job cutting out her hair or not. Even though I worked maybe a little longer on this, if I were to do it normally, I may need to come back here with my eraser and do a little bit of a cleanup job just to make sure I've got a really clean edge. Now, her hair in this image is a little blurry. You may want to have a better image as you work, but that is how we refine hair. Make sure you save it as a JPEG, turn in, like the video, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Bye.